Hi friends, uh, my name is Megan and welcome to my floss tube number something. I'm not sure. <laughs> this was kind of an impromptu affair today, uh, so I didn't look it up. But either way, welcome. Um, welcome if you're new and if you are returning, thank you very much for coming back and spending some time with me today. I appreciate it very much. Uh, I hope you all have been well. Um, we have all been pretty regular. Um, it's still very hot here in Maryland and humid. We had like one cool day. It was like maybe 70s, upper 70s. And I was like, falls here, that's it. <laughs> no, not even a little bit, not even at all yet. Um, so we're, you know, surviving through the end of summer. Uh, Quentin starts back at school on Tuesday. Uh, he's going to be doing uh, virtual learning, um, which I think is great. I'm, I'm really glad that we have that as an option here. I know, um, I don't know. I know for us in our family, I feel like that's a good decision. So um, I know it hasn't been that long since I have been here, but I have finished a few things and several of them are actually going to be uh, leaving me tomorrow. <laughs> so I knew if I didn't get on today, I would never be able to share these with you guys. And I really wanted to do that. So I'm just gonna, I guess, go ahead and get started. This should be a shorter video today. I only have a few whips and a few benches and a little bit that came in the mail. So, all right. Uh, when last we spoke, I showed you I was working on the Mirabilia uh, Cathedral Woods Goddess, which is meant to look like this. And she lives in my Diana bag that I love. And I had almost finished with the bottom half, um, and I did finish the bottom half. So there's half a Mirabilia. <laughs> Uh, the fabric that I'm stitching her on is a 28 count Monaco uh, that I dyed myself. It never, well, I have, I've shown this a lot. <laughs> uh, it's not coming across very accurately. Uh, it's actually like a mottled kind of purpley color. And oh, I can't see. That's where she is. Very pretty. I really, really enjoy working on her. Um, oh, there's a needle in there and hope to get back to her pretty soon. Uh, the next two things I'm gonna show are things that I had been um, kind of stitching on and not really showing because they are uh, gifts and exchanges, but then I realized that no, the people that are going to receive these have no idea that I'm stitching them for them. <laughs> so for a Halloween exchange that I'm in um, through the Stitchers Coven group, I stitched a pattern called, sorry, uh, Goblins Come to My Door, which is designed by Angela Pullen Arthurton of Pullen Designs, and actually I had to rip it out of the magazine. This came from the Just Cross Stitch Halloween uh, 2014 edition, and I stitched this little ghosty here. And that was a fun stitch. A lot of uh, fractional stitches that I wasn't expecting, but that was okay. And I fully finished it into a little flapple. That's really cute. I would I would stitch that little ghost again. He's adorable. Um, this was a scrap of linen. Uh, I think it was a 20 count that I dyed. I used the sulky white again. The only thing that I, <laughs> the only way I want to stitch white. A uh, little pom-pom trim on the back, just some kind of spooky fabric, a little gray lace uh, for the stand. There he is. Um, I used uh, Vana, the Twisted Stitchers method for her flat folds for that. So that's going to be leaving me tomorrow. Um, the next thing I, well, I guess not the next thing, but the next thing I finished, um, is for a kind of a surprise Christmas gift extravaganza. <laughs> um, and for that person, I stitched uh, Peace Angel by Nikki's Creations, and that's out of the D 
December 2019 just cross stitch. Um, kind of hard to show you the pictures of the chart, but that's what that was meant to look like. And my small kind of turned out a little bigger than a small. Not on purpose, it just sometimes these things happen. But I'm really happy and I really hope that the person this is going to will like it too. But this is my finish. A peace angel. Um, it's in just one of these, you know, it's like a, it's like a plasticky tube made to look like wood. Um, and I think last time I showed that I had purchased some like rusty jingle bells and rusty snowflakes and a rusty heart and it was all for finishing this. And then the back is just gray felt, but I'm super happy with how that turned out. I think she's sweet. It reminds me very much of the person that it is going to and uh, I hope that she loves it. All right, so my plan was after I finished with the Mirabilia was to pull out garden vegetables and give that some love. And so I did that, I pulled it out. Um, but the main, I'm gonna show it to you in just a moment. Uh, the main grid of the pattern is all stitched in 3031. And I ran out of 3031 shortly after beginning to work on it. Sorry, there's a cat on the table. <laughs> um, and I was having a kind of a hard time finding it uh, to buy it online. I was able to get one skein from uh, Abby Topknot um, and I have a couple more ordered. So I had a little bit of time in between when I was working on it and I was waiting for more floss to come in. So during that time, I decided to pull out Hannah Carter 1838 by Shakespeare's Peddler. That's what it's meant to look like. This is stitched um, in just two colors, a uh, black and like a, a yellow, you can see down there. And I hadn't worked on this, I don't think, since when I first started it. And I uh, just worked on it until it was done. I stitched this sampler on a, per a piece of 32 count lamb's wool jobelin um, that I had uh, coffee and tea dyed. And I used uh, Victoria Motto Sampler Shop in very prim teal. I was originally just going to use this one color and then, you know, sometimes you start a project and you're like, oh, am I gonna have enough floss? I could have done this like three times <laughs> and had enough floss, but I, I had a small freak out and so I also added in some 924. And then for the yellow on my project, I had a little bit of um, a dinky dye silk. I, I had purchased one of their oops packs and it came with like a couple of little tiny, like one length of different colors. And it's the kind of gold color that I used. And here she is. A little wrinkly, <laughs> but all done. And I absolutely love her. I think she's gorgeous. She was a lot of fun to stitch. All the alphabets were really fun. Um, let's see. The big one is done in Smyrna Cross. And there is some um, four-sided stitch here for this border. Something like that. And you can see the little Christmas tree and the bird and the moth. And there is um, a little bit of oval one stitching as well. But I love this. This will be the second edition for my blue sampler wall one day. <laughs> I'm really happy to have that done. I do think that this would be a good sampler um, maybe for a beginner to try because the border is pretty simple. It's with the exception of the corners, it's all the same. You get to try out a couple of different um, stitches. The, the over one is not that much. She's big, but she's kind of sparse for being so big. So I don't know. I loved her. I love stitching her. And I am glad to have her done. All right. 
That takes us to garden vegetables. So here's the picture. If you're not familiar with the chart, um, this is what I was talking about, the main grid. So I already have, um, it's in the Q snap because I'm still working on it. I already have this entire half done. This is halfway complete. All of that is completely done. So I started on this side over here and I'm about halfway with the grid and, um, and the inches and the months. So, so let me find it. That'll help. No, I'm just being awkward. All right, well, here's where I am. It's kind of a situation over here, but I did get um, halfway through the chart, and tonight I'm going to start on my uh, next big lady. And I can't wait. I'm going to work on this, um, I don't know, maybe another day or two. I took a couple of days off of work, which I don't normally do. I took off yesterday, which is when I did all of my finishing <clears throat> today. And then we're off Monday for the uh, Labor Day holiday. So I'm hoping, so I don't know, maybe Sunday or something, I might pull out something different and see where I can get on this. Right, so like I just said, uh, yesterday I did a whole bunch of finishing. Um, I normally get up at like 4.30 in the morning for work, so my day's off. Uh, sometimes my body still wants me to get up early, so I woke up once thinking I was late. <laughs> I was not. And then at 6 o'clock, my body was like, all right, you, that's it, You're, you are done. So I got up at 6, <clears throat> and I was... In the dining room finishing at 7 a.m. like working on finishing at 7 a.m. and I did that all day long. I still have the other half of the dining room table set up with all of my sewing stuff. I think I'm going to um, make some more masks tomorrow. I found a so the pattern that I used for the mask that I originally made came from one of our local hospitals. Uh, I did find a different type of mask that's supposed to help with the fogging of glasses. I don't know. I'm gonna make a couple and see if I like them. So that's on the plans for tomorrow. Uh, today I actually, last time we spoke, um, I had said that I had cleaned, like went through all of my stash and organized, you know, all of my patterns and my fabrics and my flosses are always kind of organized. But today I decided to take every single thing out of my craft room. Uh, there's a closet in there, everything off the shelves, all of it. And I went through everything and I organized it and I put it all back and I've got like two giant bags of stuff to donate and um, we also keep like linens in there and I refilled all the linens and everything is just so nice and I just want to go sit up there but it's really hot in there. <laughs> Total side note. The other things I finished. Uh, this uh, I showed you last time as well. This is Onward Noble Steed uh, by Lindy Stitches. And I made it into my very first little drum. And I am super, super happy with how this turned out. See, I put a little bit of ribbon. This is for my niece. I'm gonna see her tomorrow, I think, so this one is also leaving. A little bow at the back and a little button. I So this was my first time doing this. I again used Vonna's instructions. First I watched the video that she had once to make sure I had everything to do it and then I kind of like did it with her, you know? And I have to say, the only part of this I did not enjoy was cutting out the circles. <laughs> I like fiddled with them for probably much longer than I needed to. But I would say all in all, this is a pretty, this is a, not a very difficult finish. It's not, definitely not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Uh, the only other thing I would change on this um, is that I I centered it like here. I should have centered it with the sweet little girl. So it doesn't, it's not quite even, I guess, but that's fine. I think that my niece will like that very much. Uh, I made one other thing for her. Now this I stitched, I don't know, years ago. Um, 
and I didn't know what to do with it and it had just been sitting around and the stitching is not great. Um, it looks like I used two strands for part of it and three strands for the other part. Um, and I was thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and I had it pulled out in my pile of things that needed to be soft finished and I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a little bag for my niece. So, I don't, well I know that the cat is Luna, uh, but I don't know what, where in the world this pattern came from. Uh, but I thought I would make her like a little witchy bag where she can put, you know, whatever little goodies that she wants in there. I've never made a drawstring bag. That was my first time doing that too. I like, you know, watched a video on YouTube as one does when they want to make something new. And then I was like, I can math that. Um, and I didn't really do that part right, but that's okay. I think it's cute. And I think she's going to think it's cute as well. So I think I would actually like to finish more things like that. Super sweet. And then because I made two things for my niece, I had to make something for my sister as well. And you have to forgive me because I can't remember the name of this pattern either, but uh, I know I got it not too long ago and if I can figure it out, I will put it down um, in the description box below. But I made this little ornament for my sister. So I stitched this a little while ago for her. It's all just done in um, backstitch. I use that same spooky fabric on the back with pom-poms and a little bit of a uh, hemp cording for the hanger and I think she is going to absolutely love it. I also finished two little ornaments I guess um, and these were two uh, black work pieces that I did quite some time ago as well. Um, here's the backing fabric. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I think that's great. Look close. Um, these came out of a Just Cross Stitch magazine. They were part of a larger chart by Liz Almond. And I also can't remember the name of that. We're doing really good here today, guys. Um, but you can see the different designs. I wanted to try out black work and these were fun. These were a lot of fun. I'm kind of surprised I haven't done more. But again, this was something that had just been hanging out and I couldn't think of any thing to do with them because they were on just pieces of Ada that were like, there was hardly any margin on these at all. Um, but I had this cat fabric and these pom-poms and so I decided to make them into little, I guess, pillow ornaments. Um, one thing that happened while making these, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I knew I wanted them to be, uh, like diamond shape and not square. And for whatever reason, instead of leaving like a side open, you know, to like stuff and then close, I left the bottoms open, which makes the bottoms a little weird, but I don't think anybody cares. <laughs> I don't care. So therefore I don't think anybody cares, but there they are pretty happy with those. So one more thing I made was a little needle book. Let me open it up. I showed you this a little while ago that I had stitched. It was um, from Shakespeare's Peddler. It's not Jenny Bean. Man, Maggie Bean. Maggie Bean's Patience. Um, so there's the stitch piece and I turned it into a little needle book, which is what I intended when I um, had finished it. Things went a little wonky with the cutting of the fabric, so we added some buttons here to make it not look as weird. <laughs> um, this fabric inside and then I have a place for 24s, 26s, which this is... That situation is why I wanted to make this into a needle. <laughs> uh, 28s and miscellaneous. Um, these are the ballpoint needles. I used them for what? Mm, for that little ghost and I liked them an awful lot actually. 
So my little needle book is already in use. I filled it up today with some needles while I was organizing the craft room. And I love it. All right, so that's all of the stitching and the finishes. We're only at 20 minutes, which is great because I wanted this to be quick. I'm gonna zip through what came in the mail, which is not an awful lot. And then I'll let you go. All right, the first thing that I want to show you is I purchased this little lap stand. It looks like this. This is the like clamp attachment here. It has a magnet on it. Um, I don't know what brand this is. It came with several different accessories. There's like the chart holder, which you can clip in, clip in to here. Um, and then there's the scroll bar attachment. And it came with a variety of scroll bar sizes. Um, and sorry if that was loud and I've been using it and I really like it a lot so far I wanted it to um, I wanted this with the clamp to hold my q-snap and because I use the bigger q-snap I do I am still like resting one side on the couch it's not quite balanced enough but already um, I'm finding that I'm able to sit up straighter while I'm stitching in the evening and that has been very good for my back and my neck um, so I think Aaron's going to uh, make like a bigger one of these to better balance my Q-snap, but I think this was awesome. Um, a lady was selling it on satchel mode for like 15 bucks plus shipping. She even refunded me a bunch of shipping um, because it turned out to be less expensive for her to ship. She was so nice. She sent in all these like little freebies, like these little buttons and and she we emailed back and forth a lot um, because my package got lost for a while. <laughs> it was a whole thing. But this has arrived, and so far I really like it. Um, like I said, I'm not sure what brand that is. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is this beautiful project bag that I purchased from uh, Cassandra Martinez. She was raising money for the Child Rescue Coalition, and proceeds from her bags uh, went to that. This is beautiful. It is so well made. It's like really squishy and I really like that. I love the elephant. I love that teal color. Let's see, there's her tag and that pretty fabric. Can't wait to find something happy and bright to put in here. I got some Silks in the mail. Mm, not my silk of the month yet. I feel like that should be soon. I got some Mosel silk. I got one of her hanks, and this is called Frostbite. That is gorgeous. I think that is so pretty. The grays and the greens and the blues and the purples. I love, 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 love that. I also got two skeins of her uh, Nuit, and these uh, both are pretty different. <laughs> Same color, uh, I hope, I'm not sure if you can see that or not. This one is almost black and this one is very gray, but I'm wondering if this gray one will solve some of, um, one of my problems with my birthday sample. I'm gonna be pulling that back out this month. So I might try that color in there. I also got some Vicky Clayton silks, which I have never used, um, but I purchased two different colors, two, two of each of two different colors. This is Mystery 102. Which is beautiful. But this, this one's gorgeous. This is Mystery 101. And in a moment, I'll show you a sampler that I believe these will be going into. I put in order with uh, Bush Mountain 
stitchery and I got two charts. Uh, the first one is Sampler Bands uh, by Kathy Varick. I think these are super cool. I love how they used them as a strap for this little pouch down here. And there's all different, she gives all kinds of different instructions on ways to stitch these and how to, what to do with them and how to finish them. And I thought that was really neat. Like here's a, it's funny, they are 583 wide by nine high. This is kind of how they lay out. I ordered that. I also ordered the reprint of Weatherwise by Prairie School. This had been a unicorn of mine. And um, I was super excited when they reprinted it. It was one of those, you know, those charts where it's like you're thinking about it and you're thinking about it. You go online, you start digging around, you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And then now it's been reprinted. And I have it here. Uh, speaking of Kathy Barrick, I grabbed some Barrick samplers. This one is called Scattering Seeds. That's what it's meant to look like. And it came with the little bag that you stitch it on. And you can, so this chart is from 2000. I don't know if you could tell the difference, I guess from the way it was stored. This side is much lighter than this side. Um, it also came with some seeds from 2000, from Luxfer. <laughs> but I thought that was really cute, but then I'm wondering if it's gonna be a giant paint <laughs> stitch. I mean, it's a very small design, um, but I like to stitch two-handed. Not only I can make that happen in this little bag. <laughs> so uh, I also got 1803 Pennsylvania Sampler House. Like this. I like it on the white. And Miss Lila's house. Actually, this one I like it on the black. Still wanting to stitch on black. Still, I'm not stitching on black. <laughs> A couple of random charts I got. Uh, Mildred's Garden House by Blackbird. I don't know why this reminds me of my grandmother, but it does. I would probably put her name on that. Uh, Miss. Ida Nolt, revisited, and this is by Hands to Work. This one's deceiving because this doesn't look very big to me, but it is 156 by 162, which is not tiny. And speaking of deception, <laughs> um, this is not Forgotten Farm Family Tree. And I love it, you know, all the birds, I love all the birds. And I was looking at it and I was like, man, this seems like kind of a lot of floss colors. You know, it's all DNC, but um, for this little, this little pillow, cause that looks like a little pillow, right? Just a little pillow? It's not. It's 144 by 144 on 18 count and eight by eight. So again, I was deceived. <laughs> This one, I had no thoughts that it would be small or easy or fast. Um, this is the Cooler Classic Charts Winter Cat Sampler. Mm. Quentin's upstairs doing something. Um, I like this for the Cardinals, for the Paper Whites, which my mom loved. And for the cat, of course. And also those squirrels. And that's pretty darn cute. And then I got myself a couple of samplers. I got my very first Hands Across the Sea, um, Elizabeth Atkinson, 1829. Take much of, pre make much of precious time. That's what that looks like. I think that's beautiful. I, uh, I'm not an Adam and Eve stitcher, but those weird ghosty Adam and Eve's I can kind of get behind. Um, everything everybody's ever said about these charts is absolutely true. Oh, here's the centerfold. Uh, I am. This will be hard not to start 
very very soon <laughs> that's beautiful um that pretty blue silk by vicky clayton i think will go into one of these minor mini quaker samplings by ellen chester of, with my needle those are really cute and blue i got from Queenstown Sampler Designs, Liddy Road Sampler, 1814. I like that she's kind of long and skinny. Uh, 129 by 402. She's very pretty. Um, these I did not take out of the plastic because they are sealed. Uh, two scarlet letter charts, uh, Jane Gammon, 1821. Uh, of words, I love stitching words, and Polly Minor 1822. Uh, uh, and this one is kind of hard to see. Uh, the stitching is there, but a lot of it um, kind of blends in with the fabric. And I think that looks really cool. Um, I don't, if so, if I like download something, I typically don't print it out because uh, I just have the uh, crappy black and white printer at work um, but I did print out the Stone Street stitch work schoolhouse primer lesson one which you guys have seen much better pictures of I'm sure uh, but I like that again I would like to do that in blue and the last thing I have here is from uh, the order I placed with a uh, top knot stitcher um, I got the DMC I got a floss for another project that's upstairs and I ordered um, a Mill Hill kit the tree of life but there was a mix-up and that is on its way to me now but she sent me frosty morning um, which is another one actually that I like an awful lot I love those little cardinals so I was not mad she every everything's all good <laughs> so very pretty all right that's it 32 minutes not too bad um, I hope everybody's okay. Uh, I hope all of us, all of the parents that are having their kids go back to school, I hope um, that we all just be patient with ourselves as well as our kids and it's, it's, it's going to be very different and I hope that you're all doing okay <clears throat> and that your families are okay and your kids are okay. I hope everybody's wearing their masks. <laughs> Thank you guys for taking the time to spend with me today. Thank you for all of your comments. I read every single one. I appreciate them very much. Um, until next time, guys. Love you all. Bye.